SightYogi.org. Costello et al. 1990. Effects of physical attractiveness of the plaintiff and the defendant in sexual harassment judgment. Background. This is the first study we will be looking at from the witness appeal section of reaching a verdict as part of your A2 psychology course. It is further categorised into attractiveness. A myriad of studies have proposed the notion that attractiveness of the defendant or of the victim can have an impact on juries. The more attractive the defendant, the less the guilty verdicts. Think of Disney films. Can you tell who the baddie is without them having to say a word? Typically you can. You can tell who the good people are and who the bad people are just from the way they look. As such, the background to this study is Ash 1946, who proposed that there was something called the halo effect, which I've done a video on and it will be in the description. The halo effect is suggesting that when we know one good thing about a person, then a halo of pleasant characteristics is imagined. And this is true if we know something bad about someone, then we imagine them, the rest of them to be bad. So if we see someone who's good looking, we imagine them to be good. If we see someone who is not so good looking, we don't imagine them to be as good. Dion, 1972, suggested what is beautiful is good. Attractive people are more likely to be viewed as having attractive personalities. Aim. The study had three aims. Firstly, to test the hypothesis that an attractive defendant is less likely to be seen as guilty. Secondly, to test the hypothesis that when the victim is attractive, the defendant is more likely to be found guilty. Thirdly, to look for any gender differences in jury verdicts depending on attractiveness. Method and design. A laboratory experiment using a mock trial. Participants were randomly assigned into groups using the independent measures design. Participants, 71 males and 74 females who participated for extra credit in their introductory psychology classes at East Carolina University in the United States. Procedure. Participants were told that they will be reading a sexual harassment case and after which they would have to answer questions of it. With the case were attracted were attached photographs of the victim and the defendant previously categorised as attractive or unattractive by a panel on a scale of 1 to 9 where 9 was attractive and 1 was very unattractive. So the experimenters took photos, gave them to a panel and said tell me who's attractive here and who's not. The panel then agreed, so you've got concurrent validity and said this person's attractive, this person's not attractive and did this for a number of photos, and then the experimenter then used those ratings of attractiveness with those photos to manipulate the independent variable by putting a photo with the case, and that's what the participants saw. The dependent variable was measured by the answer to the following question. Do you think Mr. Radford is guilty of sexual harassment? Towards the end of the case booklet, the participants were asked to rate the defendant and the victim on 11 bipolar scales, also known as semantic differentials, such as dull, exciting, calm, nervous, warm, cold, etc. So, I thought this person was dull, so dull might be 0 on the scale and exciting would be 10 on the scale. Findings Analysis of the ratings revealed that physically attractive defendants and victims were positively rated on other personality variables as well. When the defendant was attractive, guilty verdicts were found 56% of the time against 76% of the time for the unattractive defendant. That's a 20% difference. When the victim was attractive, the guilty verdict followed 77% of the time with 55% of the time for the unattractive victim. Again, a 22% difference, which is pretty close to what it was for a guilty verdict. No significant gender differences were found, and both sexes were equally influenced by attractiveness. Conclusions. Although the findings come from a mock trial, when applied in a courtroom, it seems appearance does indeed have a powerful effect. And this finding has been supported by much other research. 
A defendant would be well advised to make the best use of their appearance when appearing in court. So dress up nice if you are going into court because you're likely to get off more, according to this research. Castello et al. 1990 evaluation. Representativeness. The sample was somewhat representative of a wider population in terms of gender. However, as a weakness, it wasn't representative of the wider population in terms of juries, as we will find for pretty much all of the studies that we look at in this section. The returning, reaching a verdict, the whole section, all nine studies that we look at. A strength is that the is validity. The independent variable was clearly manipulated with few confounding variables. In fact, the fact that the person, the experimenter used photos is very important because it suggests that we can't actually see personality. If we're seeing a photo, we can't see someone's personality. Whereas if we were watching a video, each person may have slightly different nuances about their behavior, which would suggest that they are a nicer person etc. So that may have confounded upon the results, but luckily they use photographs, so we can say there's high validity in this research. Another strength is the interrate of reliability. Because a panel of judges rated the attractiveness of the photographs, we can say that these are likely to be easily replicated in the future because it's already been replicated among a group. Construct validity is a strength because it supports the halo effect that Ash 1946 proposed. There's another strength, usefulness. This research is useful for defendants because it suggests they should make the best of their appearance in order to reduce the chance of a jury returning a guilty verdict. Reliability is another strength because of the large sample and the methodology being a lab experiment, this makes the study highly reliable. Demand characteristics may of course be another problem as we've seen with all the studies so far in this section. As the participants were given course credit for their participant participation, we can argue that some of the results may be due to participants trying to act in a way desirable to the experimenters. Again, another point that we've seen again and again in this section is ethnocentrism. The study used only American psychology students. This is not a representative sample and therefore cannot be generalised to other countries or even the legal system itself in the United States. A weakness is the generalizability. As the case was about sexual harassment, we cannot say that the results would be generalizable to other types of crimes. So what if it's a murder case? Would the attractiveness of the defendant and victim play a part in that? Another strength is quantitative data. Again, we've seen this quite a lot. The use of quantitative data means that it is easy to compare and analyse, which makes it easy to establish cause and effect through statistical significance. Remember, this is an, ex an exhaustive list of evaluative points. You should make sure that you make your own ones up to, in order to gain a better understanding of the case. If you've enjoyed this Psych Yogi video, why not subscribe to keep up with all the latest videos.